and welcome to this episode 30 of the Knit Sip Happy Podcast. My name is Nancy. I'm coming to you from the east coast of Canada, just outside of Moncton, New Brunswick. It is Sunday, January 28th. It is gloomy and trying to snow, so I have my ring light on and artificial above my head, so hopefully the colors will uh, cooperate with us today. Welcome. Thanks for being here and hanging out. I hope you're having a lovely day, weekend, whatever, wherever, and whenever you're catching up with me. I'm looking at my dreadfully messy desk behind me. I wonder if I can make myself bigger. Please don't. <laughs> Um, you can find me um, everywhere on the internet as Knit Sip Happy. Um, I'll put a screen up here on Instagram, Ravelry, Facebook, and email. Everything will also be linked down below under the more. In the description box is a drop down menu, and that will have all of my links where to find me, and also links to my Ravelry project pages and all of the makers I'm going to talk about today. So we've got mostly knitting. Um, a little bit of cross stitch and a little bit of spinning to show you. Not really spinning, fin well, hand spun. <laughs> I am wearing, what am I wearing? I am wearing a ranunculus, but it is not a ranunculus that I have knit. So, uh, ranunculus by Midori Hirose, one of the most popular patterns on Ravelry, I am sure, for garments, definitely is a uh, beautiful uh, loose gauge pullover. I'm sure you've already heard about it. I'm preaching to the choir, but this one has a special story. Um, if you've been around for a while, you've probably heard this. If you're new, you may not have. This was um, found at a secondhand clothing store. Uh, Amanda from Sweet Skein of Mine had posted on Instagram, this was a three, four years ago, maybe, can't remember. Um, that she had seen this in a secondhand clothing store that she had gone into and she noticed it because it's her yarn. Uh, this is Fingering Weight Mohair, Sweet Skein of Mine. I believe it's the Cricut Cove colorway. Knit East colorway. I can't remember. Um, and it's beautiful. Pinks and greens and it is the Fingering Weight held with the mohair. And it was at a thrift store. I can't remember how much money it was. $12? $12. It was in Fredericton. I live in Moncton, so that's almost two hours away. Uh, my daughter lives uh, close to Fredericton, just outside of, and my husband, lovely Brad, was heading up to Fredericton the next day to help Sam do something in her apartment, something renovation-y. I can't remember. And so I, I called the store and asked if they would mind holding it for me. And they said absolutely, and said that uh, my husband Brad would be in to pick it up the next day. And he did, and he brought it home. I washed it and blocked it, and I love it. It is um, three-quarter sleeves with the I-cord, which I don't have anything. I've always done mine full sleeves. Um, it's quite cropped. I'm not going to stand up because I'm wearing an ugly tank up underneath. And um, yeah, I, I love it. It's got a, a few foibles. The, the short rows are a little off kilter, back and front, um, but only a knitter or me is going to notice that. So this is a lovely ranunculus that I do like to wear um, layered uh, this time of year with tank tops or a blouse underneath, and uh, but I did not knit it. I'm also wearing um, my Easy Peasy socks. I'm going to put a picture of those in because I'm wearing them today for the first time. If you remember, these are the uh, Colorwork socks, my first full all over Colorwork pair of socks. And my phone is, I've got notifications coming up. I forgot to put my phone on airplane mode. I'll see if it bugs me. If it does, I'll pause. <laughs> Little messages flipping across the screen. Um, yeah, so I'm wearing my easy peasy socks today. I'm also wearing my lovely stitch marker necklace from Jeanette Walker Jewelry in Prince Edward Island. And we're going to talk more about that later. Um, about a potential gift away that will be coming up. So yes, let us head right into the knitting. We're gonna start with finished objects. And I have a few, quite a few. So I'm gonna start with this one because I'm gonna insert some video. These are my 
licorice all sorts or all sorts of fun socks. This is the second pair. Um, if you have been around since uh, late summer, uh, when I went to England on holidays, I was knitting on these tubes um, all over my travels, different pubs and on trains and in queues. So I had done two separate tubes and I have done afterthought toes and afterthought heels. So I had a few questions and comments about the cutting in process. So because I had shown the first pair that I'd cut in um, last time and I gifted those to my mum and she is loving them. <laughs> as soon as I showed them to her, she loved them um, and thankfully they fit. So um, she is wearing those in very good health. And um, I, yeah, so I showed the first pair. This is the second pair out of the, out of the um, same 100 gram sock set. And I just used black for the toes and the heels. So I'm just gonna pause a minute here and I'm going to insert a video of me um, separating the socks to put in the afterthought toes. That seemed to be the biggest, the biggest question. So let's do that. I'm going to stop. I'm going to turn off the notifications because I have to stop anyway. And then we'll uh, carry on. So this is just a quick video. It's not a tutorial, but just to show you um, how I separate my tubes. I have a, this is the all sorts colorway from Turtle Pearl. I have two heels on, on opposite sides, not very well planned. I am going to use two uh, circular needles and separate this tube into two socks. I'm going to show you how I do it. So the midpoint is this black line. That's where I'm going to separate to put the toe in. So of course it's on black, it might be a little difficult to see, but on the yellow, I'm just going to show you, what I do is I pick up the right hand leg of all of the stitches going around. So Again, through my camera is a little, a little more challenging. I'm going to be doing this, but I'm going to be doing it on the black. So you just scoop up that right hand leg of every stitch all the way around the sock. I'll be back when I've done it. So this is a 64 stitch sock. So I've picked up 32 of the right hand leg all the way across. And because I'm doing this magic loop, I'm just going to pull this needle through, flip the sock over, and I'm going to do exactly the same thing. Just make sure you're picking up on the same row. So the first stitch, like I said, especially in this black, it's not ideal, but I'm gonna be picking up and coming across 32 stitches again. I'll be back to show you. Okay, so I've come all the way around the sock and those stitches are ready. So those will be that this will be the needle for this sock. And I'm going to do the same on the get myself unwound. I just pulled this needle out of my case. So we're going to leave a row We leave a blank row and then we pick up the right hand leg on the, the row above. So we leave a full row and then I'm going to pick up the right hand leg above. Let me get started and I will show you. So I've started picking up the right hand leg. I've actually moved into the yellow because that's where my stitch, my stitch pickup is and we've got this blank black row underneath. I'm going to have to figure out some better lighting. I might have to turn my ring light on to show you the next step. So all I'm going to do is pick up the right hand leg of these stitches. I'll do 32. I'll pull the magic loop through and then I'll flip to the other side and pick up another 32 and I'll be back to show you what everybody freaks out about that heart stopping moment where you're cutting. So I will come back and plug my ring light in so I can show you that on the black properly. So 
I've got two magic loop needles in with one row separating them. And then all I'm going to do is I use a darning needle and just kind of scoop up a leg of one of those stitches in that middle row. Again, doing it on camera directions and I'm going to snip it. So, and we're just going to unravel that row in between. I said I use my darning needle, but this black yarn is boy oh boy making things difficult. I'll be right back. I'm going to get it started and then you'll be able to see what I'm doing. Okay, so I got it started. You still can't see much on the camera, but I think you can probably just kind of, I'm just grabbing that black thread, that black yarn that I snipped and I'm pulling it back and you can see that the stitches are secure on the two needles. There is nothing going anywhere. It's not scary at all. So I'm just going to keep on picking this out and I will be back to show you what the what my two separated socks look like. And there we have it. I have two separate socks ready to pop a toe in. They're already set up for magic loop. That's it. So finished objects, all sorts of fun. This yarn is from Turtle Pearl Yarns and uh, the lovely Emily is quite local to me, about half an hour away. I will have more of her yarn to show you later because as I've mentioned, um, she is coming into my local business and um, making purchases and we are bartering for part of it. So um, it's working out delightfully. I'm, I'm really enjoying it. <laughs> Finished object number one. You've kind of already seen the mirror image of these last week. I'm just gonna plop everything on the floor. Um, I also showed you, these were my Christmas Eve cast on. This is my Swiss dot shorty pattern, but we're calling them not so shorty because I've done a full leg. This is using um, Lily and Pine yarn. It was a sock set called Fireworks. I have it. I have the leftovers here, my cute little chestnut bag. So there is still, I haven't weighed the main color. There is still loads, not so much of the hot pink, but I can definitely knit uh, my daughter a pair of shorties and they're still in the project bag. And I will tell you for why in a little bit, the leftovers are still in the bag. So that, um, I got that pair finished. I can't remember exactly where I was last time you saw me, but the pair is finished. And I can't decide if I'm going to save these to start wearing next December, or next December, this December, um, for the holiday season, treat myself to them for the beginning of Advent, or if I'm going to put them into rotation now. I have a lot of socks, as you might guess, and um, I have a whole bunch of new pairs right back there somewhere that I've never even worn. Um, that I've knit and I just have a pile back there that when pairs wear out or I need to refresh that I, uh, I grab from there. The issue is I have so many pairs. I, I wear them, you know, two or three times, maybe a winter. Um, um, yeah, I probably do sock laundry once every five or six weeks and I wear hand knit socks every day. So I do have a lot of socks. <laughs> um, and to that note, 
we're going to go off on a little tangent here. My friend Leanne, I was, she, we were in her chat group yesterday. She's testing one of my patterns and we were, anyway, she showed this great picture of her socks organized, freshly washed in these organizers. And I went, hey, whoa, what is that? Because I'm storing mine in a Rubbermaid, just kind of in little rolls, but there's no dividers or anything. And it's um, drawer organizers from Amazon. So I promptly went on Amazon and ordered a set of three. So that's 24, 72 pairs. I don't know where I'm gonna put them exactly. Brad has his thinking cap on about that, about ways he can mount them or something, anyway. So I have ordered some sock organizers and when they come, maybe I'll record that, me sorting out. I'll do a, a sock wash and I'll record a little, all of my socks and putting them in this new sock organizer. That might be fun. It'll be fun for me. <laughs> Um, yeah, tangent, tangent. I'll put the link below for the Amazon's, um, drawer organizers with the dividers to put socks in if you're interested and Swiss dot shorties, finished pair, loved them, loved the colors, loved working the pattern. I think it really controlled some of the pooling that was happening and having that break with the hot pink mini, uh, yeah. Really enjoyed this knit. Finished object. I should probably, I should probably look at my list, eh? Um, the first Christmas present of the year is complete. These are man socks for my son, Zach. I showed you, I was working on one of these last time. Uh, I really enjoyed working on these. I found the self patterning quite fun. This was a new sock yarn to me. It's Wacky Sacky by Wisdom Yarns. What I didn't like, there were, I've come across two breaks in the yarn so far and they weren't joined with a knot and they were not, they were not knotted where the, 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 the design carried on. So this one, it, it happened, the first one happened quite early in the first sock. So I think I, may have pulled out some yarn. I can't remember. That was a few weeks ago already. Um, the second one has happened in a second pair I have on the needles. I'll show you in a minute. But I didn't worry about stripe matching on this pair. So they are siblings, not twins. But because of the break, look right here, it started to match up again. You can see I've matched up again right here. Yeah, so that must have been where the break was. And so, no, I didn't. I then just carried on knitting. So I did end up with a quite matchy-matchy pair of size 10, 72 stitch men's socks. I knit these on my Chowgu nine inch circulars just because um, it was an easy round and round. I just put in a little um, garter panel down the side and in my Ravelry page on my notes, I think I did it three stitches at the I three st knit three stitches, did the garter panel, knit all the way across, did the garter panel, and three stitches, and then plain on the back. I did a contrast heel. This was Knit Picks Stroll something something that um, was in my stash that I thought went really well with it. So these will get stored up in my bin up there for uh, Christmas. Christmas 2024. That's one pair of man socks out of the way. I do try to get the man socks out of the way early. That way, if I get caught short and needing to knit some extra pairs, um, I don't have to worry about the guys. The guys are done. The other finished object that you have seen before, this is my Muscleboro hat. So Muscleboro hat by Isolde Teague. I'm sure you have seen this hat everywhere. It seems to be having a real... Uh, boost again. It was really popular about three or four years ago and now it seems to have come back with a vengeance. So this is some hand spun. I knit mine on a three millimeter needle. Um, so if you're not familiar with the muscle bar hat, you cast on, do a small little pinhole cast on, you do the increases and when you have enough that you can measure your gauge, you measure your gauge and that tells you how many stitches you need to increase to. So I can't remember what size I ended up having to use, but on my three millimeter needle, it, it might be a little loose. I probably could have done a 275, but actually where it's doubled, um, I think it's good. So 
again, if you haven't seen the must wear hat, it kind of goes inside itself. You take one end of the sausage and shove it in the other end of the sausage. So I was going to do a shorter style um, and not cuff it, but I didn't know what I would have done with the leftover hand spun. So I decided to go until pretty much the end. I had 10 grams left of hand spun because um, I didn't want to also play yarn chicken. So this will be cuffed to where, do I dare? So this is it cuffed. So it's double thick here, quadruple thick here. I'm not gonna palm palm it just because it comes out, but I'll, I'm also looking for a quite warm hat. So I don't wear hats a lot, but I thought this would be good to throw in my work bag. If I get caught on a very cold night, I work until seven in the evening. So if I get cold on a, get caught on a cold night without a hat with me, I thought that this in my work bag would be great to have. So. Muscle wear a hat finished and I love I love the way the hand spun worked in it. I can see myself grabbing another skein of hand spun out of my stash and casting one on and just having it for easy on the go round and round socializing knitting. So finished object number four. Muscle wear a Swiss dot to Christmas socks, all sorts. Okay. Last time I was here, I'm gonna I'm just gonna show these as finished objects. Um, not spend a lot of time talking about them necessarily because I'll be talking about them in design chat tour, you know, in the mid range. Oh, there will be chapters. I didn't mention that in my little, my little blurb at the beginning. Um, I have chapters set up so you can skip sections if you don't want to see different parts. <clears throat> oh, I forgot to tell you what I'm drinking. Red, obviously. This is uh, Marceline. It's a Grenache Carignan uh, cross breed grape um, that comes from Languedoc, France. And it's delicious. It's one of my favorites right now. So when I was here last, whew, I was saying that I didn't have a lot of design mojo at the moment. Um, that was beginning of December. I hadn't designed a new sock since um, October, November-ish. I think I designed Crooked Cubes in October, it came out in November, and I wasn't really feeling the vibe. But um, after I finished talking to you, my brain kind of clicked in and I have, I have agreed to several collaborations this year. <laughs> Not that I'd forgotten about them, but there's numerous. Um, so I, I, there's gonna be some secret squirrel knitting coming up because I have three, um, three? three pairs of socks that I'll be knitting up, designing, knitting up for um, collaborations at Knit City, Montre Knit City, Toronto. Knit City is being held in Toronto this year at the Harbour Western Castle. Um, I will have three sock designs, one with yarn indulgences <clears throat> and two with other yarn dyers. And I'm not going to say because I can't remember if I'm allowed to say anything, um, but they will all be secret designs. I'll be able to show you the yarn at certain points, but um, they will be secret designs, secret test knits. But as I was making up my list of designs and dates and how I was going to, I pulled out my stitch dictionaries and I started pulling up some charts and some swatches that I've done previously and just felt the bug. So I don't remember last time I had shown you, um, or a couple times ago, I'd shown you a skein of uh, Njord from Cami Jo Knits. Where's my bag? Cami Jo Knits, Camilla, the lovely Camilla, is in Denmark. And there it is. She had very kindly sent me three skein, different skeins of sock yarn of hers to try. So this is the DK7525 DK sock in the colorway Njord. And um, I, uh, it's a beautiful tonal navy blue that I loved working with. The challenge, no, I'm just going to show you the socks. We'll talk about the specific design stuff later. So I have two 
they're on blockers again because I was out taking pictures and video this morning in the snow and they got wet so I had to block them again. <laughs> so this is blowing out a little bit on the color but this is a DK sock design top down with a fun design fun super squishy texture design down the front all the way down the front and on the back of the leg we've just got a little a little rib section just to uh just to help do some counting but also uh just a little fun a little fun on the back so this is the medium size that will fit me and then hang on one second i just need to put this blocker down it and then I had cast on and knit a second pair in the size large in this bright spring green. This is from Deborah Yarn Indulgences. Um, she used to have a DK sock base with 7525 nylon, very similar to this one. She no longer carries it, but I had a couple of skeins in my stash. So these will also be going to my mum because she has a thing with this slime green, as my daughter used to call it. So this acidy, limey green. So these are two pairs of DK socks that I've knit since I've seen you. And when we get into design chat, I will talk about them more. I'm just going to put them down here so I can reach them again. And that's it for finished objects. I do have quite a few whips on the go as well. Where am I? Where am I starting? What's on my list? What's on my list? So back to the man socks that I did for Zach. I had, I'm trying to remember. I had leftovers of this wacky sacky yarn. I had 27 grams left after knitting his pair of socks. And one of my goals this year is to have less scraps, less leftovers. So I'm going to be trying to, when I knit a pair of socks, I'm gonna cast on a second pair right away with the leftovers, however, whatever, however much there are, and either do shorties or a second pair, or we're gonna to have to see. And again, this isn't gonna be terribly realistic for some parts of my year as I'm doing a lot of sock knitting for designs, but I'm really gonna try. So I had this wacky sacky left over and I kept the same Knit Picks Stroll fingering. This was the agate heather. This was the heel on Zach's socks. And I also had this sprinkle heather, purpley color. It's blowing out a little bit. It's a bit better. It's a nice heathered. So, and I thought went perfectly with this. So I've cast on toe up uh, and there's a reason for that as well. But again, I was only going to have 13 and a half grams of the main yarn to do the whole sock, obviously a shorty. So I'm doing a lady size six, 64 stitch. So I did a toe up cast on from my wintry woods or dune grass socks and the purple. And I've just been knitting vanilla, obviously on my nine inch chagu circular 2.25. I did a fish lips kiss heel in the uh, agate heather in the beige and I've just carried on. So, and this is how far I've got. I've just run out of the uh, the wacky sacky and I had, remember I said I had a break? I had another break up in this section. It was not, no it was down here. I was not very pleased. So I'm liking the feel of it. This is, I think it's bamboo polyamide wool blend. I wouldn't buy this again because of the breaks. Um, this just, it's not a deal breaker. It's a pain in the butt when they're striping and then your stripe sequin goes wacky. Maybe that's why they're called that. Anyway, I digress. I've just picked up and done one round of the purple and I'm just getting ready to start the rib. So that's not bad for a shorty. Again, it's only a lady size six. So it's, it is a petite shoe size, but I will be using up every single gram of this and there'll be none of it going into my stash. So that's a win-win. So I'm going to just finish off the ribbing, get the second toe cast on, and then these are also great on the go knitting because it's just round and round. 
I was knitting on these when I donated blood this past week. So I'm going to have a little tangent. I'm just going to show you this, this yarn tag first. This is the Wacky Saki Wisdom Yarns. And the color is Wild Woods. So donating blood. I'm in Canada, but I was born in England and lived there till I, uh, 1981. And in the early, in no, mid nineties, early to mid nineties, um, there was, um, an issue with our blood supply. I think it happened around the world. There was things like hepatitis, you know, they they had to inc improve their screening processes. So, um, I was disqualified from donating blood because of the risk of mad cow disease infection spreading into the Canadian blood system. And I've since discovered that Australia, New Zealand, Switzerland, there's lots of other countries that did that and still have it in place. So I've been disqualified for being a mad cow. Ha 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 ha. Insert laugh roll here. It's one of Brad's favorite jokes. Um, because I, I, we lived in England and obviously would have eaten meat and, you know, it was just, we were, I was disqualified. So I was on Instagram or Facebook a couple of weeks ago and saw, um, a post from, um, Canadian blood services. I think that's what they're called. I think I might sneeze. Maybe not. Um, that I was able, if you had lived in England or France or Italy, I think was the other one. I can't remember several European countries, you are now able to donate blood. So I went on the website, registered and donated blood for the first time in 28 or 29 years. I think we figured out, um, no, maybe only 25. They, I didn't even think I was going to be in the system, but I had donated blood up until I believe 1996. Yeah, you don't need to know all this. But suffice to say, this came with me when I was donating blood um, because I got to donate blood again. Yay. Um, it's really important to me to know that it's a little something that I can do. Um, I think of my husband being on the operating table and having had complications and needing a blood transfusion. And um, I want to make sure that blood is there for anybody who needs it and going forward. So I will be a regular blood donor as long as I'm allowed to do it. There, we're going to go back to knitting now. <laughs> um, I'm going to show you another pair of scrap socks I've showed you numerous times and I've already reworked um, this once. This is my leftover fairy lights from West Yorkshire Spinners in my amazing Love a Good Fingering bag. The maker had closed down their original shop, but they still had a shop that carried these bags. I will try to link it below. I was told they don't have any in, um, but you could always try messaging them. I'm not sure where the status is on that, but you always get a big joke out of this bag. And this bag will always remind me of my dear future son-in-law, Rob, who blushes every time he sees it. <laughs> All right, that was the humor. Back to my tale of woe. I had done the first sock. I'd run into problems. I'd ripped it pretty much all the way back and restarted it. And I have got the second sock on the needles. I did top down, not toe up. That is a rookie mistake. And I am out of yarn. I am out of West Yorkshire Spinners. And I am two stripes short. I'm missing a green one and another Mixed one. <sighs> These socks have not been giving me great joy because they're a 56 stitch, which means they won't fit me. Because if they fit me, I would just whack an extra long turquoise toe on there and that wouldn't bother me at all in the contrast. Wouldn't bother me. However, 56 stitch socks don't fit me. They were going to be a gift. And um, I would not gift that because yeah so I may you know my brain just clicked in I may talk to my local knitters and see if any of them have two grams they could spare me three grams max I just need two stripes um to finish 
this darn, darn pair of socks. So my local knitting friends are maybe coming at you for West Yorkshire Spinners Fairy Lights. Because I really don't want to have to rip out the whole, pretty much, freaking pair because I was an idiot and didn't cast on toe up. So that is in the naughty corner until I either get up the gumption to rip them out and put it away for a while because I don't think I can face it, or if I um, manage to find a little nugget from someone local. Yeah. On to more fun things. Uh, I'm going to show you this first. We're going to get off the sock train for a little bit, and I'm going to show you my uh, Zweig. I have made some really good progress on my Zweig since last time. So I've just put some barber cords in here on the sleeve and the bottom because I did a little try on video and I'll show you that in just a second. But I did want to show you. I am doing the cable crosses on the body. I have, uh, I finished one skein of yarn and when I did that, I decided to pick up a sleeve. That's my favorite way of knitting sweaters is when I finish a skein on the body is to put the body on hold and then do the sleeves. I find it a lot easier to do a fit try on when I have the sleeves in place. It just, it just makes it easier for me to visualize, I guess. So I am knitting the size six, but I am off gauge. My gauge was 27 stitches over four inches and not the call for in the pattern. So um, I was, I didn't alternate skeins at the top and through the color work, but I was alternating skeins through the body. And then I couldn't, It the yarns looked pretty good to me. So I'm living on the edge and I decided not to, um, helical knit through the body because helical knitting with those cross cables was a pain in the butt. So where did I stop? Where did I stop? I stopped here, right here. And I don't think you can tell that I haven't been helical knitting for that last bottom two inches. I am, however, helical knitting on the sleeve um, because the third skein that I caked up seemed quite, it seemed quite dark compared to the first two. So I am helical knitting on, I'm not, let me rephrase that. I'm not helical knitting on the sleeve. I am alternating skeins on the sleeve. So I am going to have a little bit of a seam running up the inside of the seam, of the sleeve, but that's my underarm. So, and I'm just keeping it, you know, loose, not too tight. And uh, I'm just going to see how this yarn plays. And if I think I'm safe, then I will snip and just use the one. But for now, I'm I'm alternating skeins on the sleeve. So I'm just gonna put a little video in here of me wearing it. I'm super happy with the fit, especially around the neck and the shoulders. If you were here last time, I had talked about, I've kind of Frankenstein and combined two patterns. I'm using, I used the Laia by Isabel Kramer for the neckline, the short rows, and the first sets of increases heading up because there has been some commentary that the neckline, my first Zweig, the neckline I find is quite wide and I didn't really, I didn't like the fit of it around my shoulders. So I wanted to try this this time. So I've used, I said, any Isabel Kramer pattern that you like the neck of or the shoulder shaping or anything, I would recommend trying it on any other sweater that you think is problematic. It's, it's a fun Frankenstein. It's knitting. The worst case, if it hadn't worked, I did do a try on before I kept going. Um, if it hadn't worked, I would have just ripped it out and started over. Um, no problem. So, um, as I said, I was, I'm doing the size six, which is going to be actually smaller because my gauge was tighter. So I, I'm actually going to work out to be, I can't remember what the finished, um, bust size is going to be. Um, but I'm really happy with the fit as you can see, and this isn't blocked. So I will get a little more out of the blocking and, uh, I have to decide if I'm going to do my A-line shaping because I am doing the cross cables. Uh, I have a feeling I am not going to be doing my A-line shaping because those increases are going to disrupt 
the cable cross and I think it would be no more noticeable further down my body. Still thinking about that. <laughs> um, what else did I need to say? Oh, the yarns. I am using the main color is Circus Tonic Handmade in their Jubilee sock, I do believe, in the color Moon Shell. I'm looking to see if I have a tag handy. I think it's back here. Oh, yes, there it is. Circus Tonic Handmade. Yeah, Jubilee Sock, it's 75.25 in Moonshell, um, which has got really pretty um, shots of blues and teals and greens um, in there. And I really loved this kind of tonal. It's, yeah, it's more like that. I'm, it's blowing out a little bit closer to the camera. This is a 65% silk, 35% mohair, fingering sport-ish base. Um, this was from Deborah at Yarn Indulgences as a base she tried during COVID, just before COVID, so back to late 2019, early 2020. I put a barber cord and I'm still, it's popped off and I'm losing stitches. Hang on just one second. And then I'm going to put it down so I don't keep losing stitches. Okay. Okay. There. So I'm really happy with this. Um, I'm going to keep on trucking. I did get a little distracted this week and I'll show you that in a minute. Okay, let's get all this back in the bag and then I will take all those barber cords off and get it back on the needles after I finish talking to you. So you can see what's happening here with the way this way, the way the way the sweaters, yoke sweaters fit me without adjusting stitch counts. Ah, that's what I need to tell you. <laughs> if you've been here before, you know, um, I love to adjust stitch counts for my front and the back of my sweaters because I am chesty across the front and flat across the back. Yoke sweaters have um, equal number of stitches, the back to the front. So as I'm talking to you, this keeps creeping up my neck and that's what I find happens with yoke sweaters un unless I make this adjustment. So what I did, what I'd like to do, I have taken an extra number of stitches from the back of the, so let me, sorry, let me back up a second here. So it's sleeve separation. What I like to do is fundamentally I'm moving the sleeves back on the sweater. I'm putting more fabric on the front and less on the back. So I moved, I brought my tablet in because I knew I wasn't going to remember all of my numbers. I moved, I'm an idiot. I didn't write it down. Okay, I, after editing me, I will count the number of stitches on the back versus the front and I'll put it in here. Yeah, I didn't count it. Sorry guys. I um, thought I was being clever with my project page and um, I failed. So however many stitches I did. So if the back says to have 100 stitches and the front says to have 100 stitches, I put 80 stitches on the back and I put 120 on the front or 90 stitches on the back and 110 on the front. I still have 200 body stitches. They're just distributed differently, the front versus the back. I need more stitches on the front to accommodate my bust. I need less stitches on the back to cover my flat back. I get a lot of questions on this and I try to explain it clearly and I feel like I stumble every single time. So you can see when I had put the video up, the fit is really nice across my bust. Um, I don't feel that it's too tight. It certainly wasn't pulling up. Um, so I feel like I might have gotten my perfect fit on this sweater. We shall see as things carry on and I get it finished and blocked. Okay, sorry about that. Now we're going to go back to a sock because 
it's in this cute, this cute bag was buried in my project bag stash. I haven't used it in ages and it's just the perfect little shorty, scrappy, one skein type project. So I pulled it out of my stash and um, back to what I was saying earlier about trying to use leftovers. I went digging and found this leftovers from a sock set. I can't remember what pattern I knit used this yarn for, but it's a sweet skein of mine. It's a very old tag. And it is also her older 7525 Superwash Merino Nylon base. She now has an 8020, but this is the color way. It was a sock set called Dashing Through the Snow. So it's super soft, bluey grays, but little pops of kind of um, rust and navy blue. And uh, yeah, it's really pretty. And I had loads of it left. So I'm sorry, I can't remember what I knit up with it. So I decided to um, grab some navy out of my stash to make a fun pair of shorties. I did these ones cuff down again because I've got loads of yarn. I got no worries about running out this time. So I am knitting the Shooting Star sock. I can't remember who the designer is. I'll put the information here and it'll be linked down below. It's just a fun, it's supposed to be a two round repeat. I stretched it and made it three and put an extra knit round in between. But I just cast on with the navy, did a couple rib rows with that middle blue and then just carried on and then did a modified fish lips kiss heel in the navy. And by modified, I mean, um, this is a 32 stitch sock. So on the last row, um, I increased up to 36. Then I followed the fish lips kiss heel instructions for the 36 stitch sock. And at the end, I picked up one extra stitch in the, in the space where you joined. Cause sometimes I find that can get stretched out and gappy. So at this point I now have six stitches to decrease. So I have a little mini gusset. You, can you see it right there? I just did three gusset decreases, alternate rounds to bring me back to my 32 sit, stitch sock on both needles. So 64 stitches, excuse me, 32 on back and front needle. I'm doing this on magic loop on my Chowgu mini twists. And these are gonna be for me. I like shorties in the summer because sometimes Brad likes the air conditioning set to Baltic and um, I still need something on my feet in the summer. So I'm about a half an inch, three quarters of an inch away to do the toe. And I don't think I have enough to do two toes in this blue. So I might do another stripe, a couple stripes of this and then back to the navy for the toe. Yeah, so that's a fun scrappy project. And again, scratching that itch for just some mindless sock knitting with the sock designs in, in uh, overdrive at the minute, I, uh, I'm enjoying just a little bit of meditative brainless sock, nothing too fancy because I'm, I'm charting and writing and knitting and ripping and knitting and recharting. And so it's a process right now and there's a lot going on. <laughs> Last but not least, for my whips, my knitting whips. If you have been following me on Instagram for the last week, you will have seen this glorious knit. I am storing it in my Michelle's Creations project bag that I got at Fiddlehead Fiber last April. Uh, Fiddlehead Fiber Festival in Florenceville, New Brunswick is happening again. I believe it's April 12th and 13th. If it's wrong, I'll correct myself on the screen. I will also have it linked below. Um, I will be attending with Deborah. Yarn Indulgences is going to have a booth and we're going to just have a grand old time with, um, maritime friends who are coming to visit and, uh, yeah, can't wait. Can't wait. Um, so this bag is from, from Fiddlehead and the yarn that's inside is also from Fiddlehead. It is, um, a sweet skein of mine. Okay, whether it's the mohair I'm wearing or the mohair I'm about to handle, I've got mohair on my face. Uh, let me just, are you gonna blow out or are you? No, so this is Sweet Skein of Mine, Raspberry Jam, 
that's the color back here. It's a little deeper and darker. And this is um, the newer sock base, the 8020 High Twist. And this is Yarnia. So I bought these two from Manda last April for uh ranunculus of course why not i bought two skeins of each i know i can get a decent sized ranunculus for myself out of two skeins of each four skeins total and that's what it was sitting in my stash to be and then sophie lovely sophie the first mention of sophie this episode <laughs> lovely sophie um knit a wilfreda by wench rolled i believe i apologize on the pronunciation um i'll put a picture in here of the designer's version. It's got a very ranunculus vibe, Sophie said. It actually has the same stitch gauge as ranunculus and a really pretty yoke design, as you can see. So I cast caution to the wind and used 5.5 millimeter needles, which is what I use for ranunculus to get the gauge that I like. Didn't gauge swatch because I know the gauge I like on this yarn combination. I've knit with it before. And it was the same gauge I was looking for, so I just cast on. And once I got a certain way through in the stockinette, I measured it, and yay me, <laughs> I got gauge. So I carried on. How am I going to show this? Because it's on short needle, it's on a short circular, and of course I don't have stitch stoppers on the end of my needles. Living on the edge. All right. That's the back. So I have... Oh just I'm going to insert a picture here of it so you can see the color a little better because I can already tell my lighting is blowing it right out um raspberry jam is looking more like nightclub neon so it's a again a traditional yoke sweater so cast on um I tried the alternating cable cast on for the first time Kelly, the Tangled Stitch, and Noel, um, Noel Knitter from the Knit Chat Cafe Tuesday night podcast. I don't very often watch it on Tuesday nights, but um, I caught up. I, they've been raving about this alternating cable cast on, that it was a great match for the Italian sewn bind off, which I like to do on my cast offs, bind offs. So I found a great tutorial on YouTube. I will attach it um, and put it in the description box below. And it was a little fiddly because I had missed a trick apparently. I did the alternating cable cast on, which gives you this nice kind of rolled faux tubular edge, but still nice and stretchy. I had done that cast on and then joined it in the round right away. Uh, Kelly, Tangled Stitch, had commented on my um, story or post, I can't remember, and said it looked great. And I'm like, any tips? Because that was a complete nightmare. I think I had to do it four times because I kept twisting, the, the cast on kept mobiusing. And it was really hard to tell just the way that the stitches are oriented. I couldn't tell if it was twisted or not. And I get to the end and curse words, mutter, mutter, it was twisted. So this was the fourth attempt. I got it without twisting it. Super happy. I just went on and did my usual one by one ribbing. Went through, did the short rows. Um, to lift the back up. I think I did one extra set of short rows because I do like the back up a little higher and the front a little lower and got to, I think I was just starting this and looked at the pattern and realized that this should have been twisted ribbing. Insert more curse words, mutter, mutter, mutter. I did a poll on Instagram. I really didn't want to because if I if I pulled the ribbing all the way back to that first round, I would have had to start the cast on all over again. My ribbon, my one by one ribbing is pretty neat. Um, it doesn't really bother me that it's not twisted. I just have to remember when I get to the sleeve and the bottom of the sweater, don't twist it, Nance. Are you listening? Don't twist it. Um, just plain knitting, plain one by one rib, not through the back loop. So I had pondered maybe ripping it back for about 30 seconds and realized, no, that wasn't going to happen. And this doesn't bother me. I really like it. I'm loving the fabric and the feel of this. This has been a joy this week to knit. I powered through the cable section, which was fun uh, using a cable needle. Um, and now I am on the body and doing the raglan increases. So this 
there's like, look, stitches coming off the needle. Hang on one second. The joy of mohair is it's sticky and it stays. So there's a few raglan increases like there is at the bottom of the yoke of the ranunculus, which sets you up for your sleeve when you take your sleeves off the needle. So I needed to do my sweater math as far as how many stitches I was moving to the front from the back at the raglan point. So you put markers in. Where are we? Where are we? So this is this little blue one is my beginning of round. Oh my goodness, I'm pulling stitches off again. When will I learn? Stitch toppers, people. So this is my beginning of round, this blue one. And then this silver one back here is the first. This So this marks one of the sleeves. So in order to do my sweater math to move stitches from the front to the back, as soon as you start that raglan increases at the sleeve, you're automatically then assigning your stitch count for the front and the back. So I had to do my sweater math earlier than I expected. So I had to stop and think about that for a minute. And this I know I did write down because I know I did. It was just this week. Um, So I took eight stitches from the back of the, the sweater to put it to the front of the sweater. So four stitches per side. And at a 16 stitch gauge over four inches. So that's eight stitches, that's two inches more. So I did, like I said, did it separations for raglan and that will give me the space. I haven't tried it on yet. I won't do that until I've separated for the sleeves and got a couple of inches down to have a look and see how I feel about it. If I don't like it, I'll rip it back and redo it because seriously, it's been so much fun. Um, yeah, I'm really, really liking this color too with, with the gray hair. I, I think it looks really nice. Um, I'm doing my usual why these stitches are sliding off a needle so easily. If you have an internet interchangeable needle set, I need to slow down. If you have an interchangeable needle set that you're working on, I like to have a smaller needle on the left hand side. So when you're knitting, your, your right hand needle is what determines gauge. Your left hand needle is just a feeder needle. So I make this a couple of sizes smaller. So this is a three, this is a, a 5.5 millimeter needle and the feeder needle is a 3.75. And it just, the needle, the stitches slide off so easily. See, just like that, they're sliding off. <laughs> the stitches slide off so easily and it just makes, you know, there's less stopping and scooching your stitches because they're just feeding off so easily. So this is Wilfreda. Um, I would like to have this finished in about a week and a half so I can block it and have it ready for February 9th. And I'll talk about that really quickly before we move on. So that's the end of whips. Um, February 9th and 10th, I'd mentioned last time I was here, we're having a winter getaway gathering friends meet up in Sussex, New Brunswick. Um, we're sleeping over at, um, we've actually moved hotels. So when I was here last time, um, we were staying at a specific hotel in Sussex. Sussex, New Brunswick is a good central location for a lot of us coming from different parts of the province. And um, we have, we had to move. We had to change venues to get a bigger banquet conference type space. We had so much interest um, through Instagram and Facebook and uh, chit-chatting with friends and um, that we've had to move venues and that's so exciting that, that we're going to get to meet I'm going to get to meet some new nitty friends I'm going to get to hang out with some my nitty friends I've had for quite a while um and I'd really like to have Wilfreda finished there's a few of us knitting Zweig and somebody proposed last night um that perhaps we could all have our Zweig ready there's no way I can have that ready in two weeks <laughs> that's absolutely no way in the world um but that Wilfreda I could probably have I could probably have done stay tuned. I'm also hoping to um, perhaps do a vlog that weekend. 
we'll see how scatterbrained and excited I get around the yarn and the yarny people and the fumes. And um, But I would like to, Sophie uh, Cozy Meadow Knits is going to be there, Menon La Violette, um, we're organizing it. Um, there's four of us, Deborah Yarn Indulgences, there's four of us kind of organizing this. And um, yeah, get there Friday afternoon, hang out, knit, um, perhaps a sip a little, uh, sip a little wine. Um, Saturday is a busy day. We have lots of people coming in just for the day to visit. We've got a mini market in the afternoon. We've got a beautiful discount from Legacy Lane Fibers who have a shop in Sussex. Um, we've got things organized and planned, a group dinner together in the evening. If you are in the Maritimes in New Brunswick, even in PEI, Nova Scotia, we have some people coming from, um, there from out of province but we're all it's all so close in the maritimes if you're in the maritimes and interested um we have room in the conference and banquet space there are no more rooms at the uh, motel where we're staying but there are lots of other options of uh places to stay in the little town of sussex if you're interested message me down below or send me an email and i will get you that information actually i'm also going to include we have a new website thank you deborah our it guru our it guru AtlanticYarnFiber.ca. It'll be on the screen. I'll have it linked below if you're interested in more details about our little winter gathering getaway in less than two weeks. I'm going to get to hang out with all my nitty friends for two whole days in less than two weeks. Can't wait. So that's the end of the nitty content. Yeah. Um, I did something, started something new. I started a new cross stitch in this fun blooming bag that I was gifted very kindly um, by Kim and Colin from Ginger Snap last year at uh, Knit City Montreal. I had done a, uh, my blooming lovely socks are back there in the ugly background. I forgot to put socks up there. Goodness, I was in such a rush today. Um, I decided to start a new little um, seasonal cross stitch. I will put a picture of it up here. It was a little freebie on the interwebs on uh i just googled free valentine's day cross stitch and this cute little gingham heart and there's the word love going to be down there so i'll put the picture on and i'll link it down below if you're interested but i just thought this would be a fun little gift for a special friend so i haven't touched it in about a week because wilfreda got got me i got addicted to wilfreda and uh the cross stitch didn't get picked up this past week. So I do need to get back to that if I'd like to have it for about and get it to her for Valentine's. Then we're going to do a little bit of spinning chat. I don't actually have any spinning per se. I haven't done anything on the wheel, but I did want to show you. I finally, finally measured and weighed and skeined up the, um, Get the spin that I had done over the summer of the Mahusiv uh, bat that I showed you, this rainbow bat that I got from Belfast Mini Mills. Um, I had gotten so excited with the spinning of it, I hadn't weighed the bat when I stripped it out, when I tore it in half, and thought, oh, this is one, this is another half, and I stripped out the colors, and I was going to do um, spin two plies together because I ended up with 109 on one and 97 on the other. I didn't have equal weights. I didn't want to waste the yarn, so I decided to chain ply it. So what chain plying has done, it's a three ply that you chain back, ply it back on itself. So it kept the striping sequence in place. And that's kind of nice too. And I've got two skeins of it. Uh, one has more of the orange red, one has more of the blue green, again, because I didn't split it evenly. So whether these go into a project together or a project separately, 109 grams, I got 310 yards on this one. And I got 363 on 97 grams. So this one is also spun finer. So I will not be... <laughs> I will not be using, sorry, 323 yards for 97 grams. And for 109 grams, 310 yards. So that isn't going to work. I use these tags to uh, write on. This is probably more a DK, and this one is 
probably a little more sport-ish. So I think I'm going to have to use them separately. Either way, they're counted, they're weighed, they're going to go into my ever-growing uh, hand-spun stash. And uh, we'll see. Perhaps it'll be color work for a yoke sweater, because you haven't heard that before. Um, the other thing I counted up and I washed and skeined. I can't remember if I showed you this last time. I think I had shown it washed, but I hadn't counted it yet. So I got this from Wonderful Wool at the Southern Wool Show last September when I was in England. And it is a Merino Corydale Trilobal banana fiber blend. And I just kind of taped this back around just so I had the tag of what it was. And I, it is 100 grams and I got, it's a two ply and I got 309 yards. Sorry about the lighting. That's pretty good color representation there. It's really, really pretty. Really, really pretty. So this is coming up. A light DK to a sport which is pretty thick for me for a two ply, but I am quite happy with it. So don't know what it'll be. Say it with me, perhaps a yoke for a colorwork sweater. <laughs> perhaps a muscle burr hat. The problem is I'm not a big hat wearer, so I can't keep knitting muscle burr hats out of my very precious hand spun because I'll never wear them. Okay. Um, spinning that was all I needed let's go back we're gonna do some design chat and I fully recognize if you are not interested in socks or my sock designs please skip on ahead there's a few acquisitions uh, coming at the end to be fair acquisitions I haven't bought yay me um, but they've come into my life anyway so um, we talked about this sock briefly in finished objects this is the Nord sock. It's a DK sock, cuff down, heel flap and gusset down to my rounded toe. So this pattern will be releasing on Tuesday, January 30th and um, will be on Ravelry. Lovecraft possibly a couple of days later. It takes a little longer for that to come up. I will, this podcast is going to go up before this sock is um, live. So once the sock goes live, I will either do a community post or I'll do a little short to post and let you know. And I will edit the notes at that point. And I'll put a link into Ravelry if you're interested in the pattern. So if you've been here before, um, you know that the first seven days, sorry, I have mohair on my face. I know I do. If you've been here before, you know that for the first seven days, eight days, whenever I feel like stopping it, all of the proceeds, all of them, uh, I, I kick in the Ravelry fees and the PayPal fees, all of the fee, all of the funds that are every $5 Canadian that uh, you buy my lovely sock pattern for is going to be donated to the New Brunswick Heart Centre. I fundraised for them last year for my Wintry Woods socks, sock pattern, my first toe up design. Um, but um, as we're heading into February, which is Heart Health Month, I thought it was a great charity to donate to, again, um, if you've been around before, again, my husband had heart surgery, open heart surgery in 2018 to correct a birth defect in um, his heart valve, one of his heart valves, and um, they took amazing care of him and me during that very stressful time for that surgery. So um, Niord socks, let's talk a little bit more about them. The color is blowing out. Um, Camilla from Cami Jo Knits does have some of this DK sock Nured in her shop. She also has it um, in her new Cami Jo uh, Yak sock base. And I've seen it in sock sets as the heels, toes and cuffs, which would be stunning. So it's a really fun kind of slip stitch, you know, twisty stitch cable type panel that runs down all the way down the front of the sock. The challenge with knitting with something this dark, it's like this, this is the actual color, it's very dark, is trying to make something that shows up. So knitting knitting the pattern on something like this, it show, once it finishes blowing out, <laughs> it shows up a lot better. 
because of the lightness of the yarn. You can see things clearer. Something like this that is darker, you really, it needs to be quite pronounced. So I thought I had charted and knit, charted and knit, charted and knit, and ripped and ripped and ripped. I think four or five different ideas for this because nothing was showing up the way I wanted it to. Uh, I thought I was going to have to cut off the yarn at the top for a while because I'd ripped and knit so many times because I like to knit it in the color that it's actually going to be the pattern. I den generally don't swatch on different colored yarn because as I said, the yarn color can dictate a lot about how you want this thing to look. So I'm just going to blow this out a little bit again and show you. And then the back just has this super fun, again, it's a slip stitch rib kind of detail. The joy of this slip stitch, it lines up with different slip stitches here. So it helps keep you, it's a simple eight, eight rounds, <laughs> eight rounds, guys, is it eight? Yes, I'm sure it is. It's been a while since I've actually, it's been a few weeks since I've met mine. It's four rounds. <laughs> that was my initial thought. And I thought, no, it can't be. Problem is I've got two other <laughs> samples on the needles and I'm getting mixed up. It's a four round repeat. It's so easy and meditative. And once you get the rhythm of it, um, which is my total favorite way to knit a sock, um, it's a little bit of interest, not so much that you really have to pay attention, but enough that it keeps you engaged that you don't end up on Instagram because you're just knitting round and round and vanilla bores you, to, bores you to tears. If you love vanilla, awesome. This is my kind of vanilla with some texture. So New York Heart Center, Cami Jo Knits has it in stock. Um, I think that's everything. Oh, uh, there is a note in the pattern. Okay, so DK Socks. So obviously it's a thicker yarn and you're getting less yardage per skein. So I tested this large size with a hundred gram skein because I wanted to see how far it went on the larger circumference size and how far we could get. Some of my testers used contrast colors just to give them a margin of error. Uh, one of my tested uses contrast colors and still ran out of yarn. She did a ladies, she did a large, the largest size for a ladies 10 and a half. Um, so there's going to be notes in the pattern that if you're above a certain size on the size large, I'd really recommend a uh, contrast heel toe, heel, <laughs> heel toe, cuff toe, or all three, depending on if you have, if you have anything over a lady's size nine, um, I would recommend that. One of my testers did, did it for her husband. She knit the large, and I think it was a man's size 11. She just used contrast, I believe, heels and toes and had no problem. I think she had several grams left. Thought she was going to be playing yarn chicken, but ended up not. So that was great news. So my testers projects are all will all be live as well and linked to the pattern if you want to look at uh, different ideas for um, knitting with a contrast color or without. I wanted to knit without because that was the yarn that Camilla sent to me. I knit a size large. No, I didn't. I knit the size medium and I had nine grams of yarn left. I knit the size large as written for a lady's seven and a half foot. I had nine grams left. And at gauge with the yarn that I was using, I was using two grams per four gram or four row repeat. The other thing that you can do with a DK sock is you can hold fingering weight double. If you're going to do that, I'd recommend a, a thinner fingering weight yarn. I wouldn't rec recommend a plump 80-20. I'd recommend a skinnier, something that's got 460 yards, 420 yards. Uh, I wouldn't want to be doing something that's only 380 yards. You're going to run out. Of, you probably will run out of yarn um, unless you're using contrast. So the gauge works to use two fingering weights held double. And quite a few of my testers did that because they didn't have any appropriate DK weight um, sock yarn with nylon in their stash. So again, my testers are invaluable for uh, the information that they give me for weights, measurements, um, 
the stitch repeats. They're beautiful color combinations. And, um, and on testers, I get a lot of emails asking people who'd like to test it for me. And I so appreciate the offers. Right now I have a really big pool of testers, but I also have quite a few test knits coming up. So if I need more testers, and it'll usually is a specific size, most people knit 70, 64 stitches, sometimes 56, 72 it tends to be the least popular. If I ever need test knitters for any of my patterns, I will either mention it here on YouTube or I will put it on Instagram that I'm looking for testers for which project. So um, I, while I appreciate the emails, it can be a little overwhelming. So hang tight if, if, you, if you're interested, hang on. And if I do need more testers, I will let you know, especially here on YouTube, because you guys are totally my cheerleaders and I appreciate it. Okay. So that's probably going to be it for design chat for quite a while. I will let you know on the next podcast how much money I raised um, for the New Brunswick Heart Center. And But other than that and flashing you yarn, perhaps, I'm not sure how much I'm going to be able to show you for different things. Except maybe. So last year so we're back on design chat really quick last year one of my best patterns my most popular pattern by far was tits up put a picture here it was inspired by a mrs mazel sock set and the name was also inspired by a saying from the mrs mazel show marvelous mrs mazel on amazon prime i have converted so many people to watching it if you're fond of um humorous women um it is sweary i will warn you of that um I love that show and I loved these socks. Uh, I took them to New York and showed them around New York, which is where Mrs. Maisel takes place. But we have to have a follow-up for Tits Up this year. So I will have a new boob themed sock that will be launching in April to coincide with the Fiddlehead Fiber Festival. It will be in yarn dyed by Deborah from Yarn Indulgences on her beautiful splendid sock base. Um, we're tweaking the color now. She's going to be dyeing that up for me. I'll start on that one soon. I don't think that one's going to be a secret. So that one I may be able to share with you next time when I come to visit. Okay, that's it for design chat, I promise. And we're wrapping up. I have a few acquisitions to show you. Um, actually, just two. I got another... Um, of the late Turtle Pearl Lady Amalthea Rainbow Sock Set. I am going to be celebrating my third design anniversary, design designing birthday in February, and I thought we would maybe have a sock knit along. So starting February 17th, I'm running through March 31st, we're going to have a sock knit along. I don't have a hashtag yet because we're not there. Next time I come and see you, will be right around there. So we will launch the knit along then, and it's gonna be for any sock patterns, but there will be a double entry if you use my sock, one of my sock patterns. So details will be decided and figured out before I come to see you next time in February for a full episode. I said I may do a vlog on the February knitting weekend, but I got this from the lovely Emily in our barter to use as one of the prizes there will be prizes. So that is a still in its plastic bag waiting for you guys. And then the other thing I got that was very kindly gifted to me by Deborah from Yarn Indulgences. She is starting to prep for um, show season that is coming up and this is her delicious silk and linen blend that I love. I've knit two garments out of this so far and I'm very excited to knit another one. I've got two skeins. This is silken linen fingering. It's a very, very good yardage. Um, it's on the skinnier side of a fingering, but it is so light and smooth and cool on your skin. I just love it. And as you can see from my handwritten note, the colorway is coral. And Again, I'm feeling this. This is very Wilfreda-ish as well, isn't it? So I'm feeling this color scheme right now. So I don't know what summer t-shirt this is going to be. Uh, I probably won't start this until probably April-ish, May-ish, because quite frankly, in the Maritimes, we don't actually get spring and summer until June, July, if we're 
June if we're lucky, July most likely. So um, this is on my radar and I'll be looking out for any fun new t-shirts. And if you have any ideas um, that you haven't seen me wear or make, um, pop your t-shirt ideas down below. I'd appreciate your opinions. So that is the incoming goodies. Like I said, they weren't purchased technically. This was gifted very kindly and the Turtle Pearl was also part of my barter that I'm doing with Emily. I'm attempting to do a no buy until, well, I until I was going to say till Knit City Toronto because I still have yarns from last year's Knit City Toronto. I haven't knit. Um, but we've got this knitting weekend coming up in two weeks. We're going to have a mini market and we're going to be going to uh, Legacy Lane. So I'm sure there will be some purchases at that point. Um, general chit chat, um, gift away going forward. That's where I kind of started off at the beginning. Um, the two winners I was waiting for, Gail and Helen, they both reached me and uh, their prizes have gone out into the mail and they've received them. Fabulous. Thank you for letting me know that. The next giveaway, um, gift away, gift away. It's not on this episode because I'm waiting. I am getting very, very close to 4,000 subscribers. And I said I was going to save this prize that was very kindly gifted to me. Goodness, I still have wine left. I purchased my stitch marker necklace from Jeanette Walker at uh, Prince Edward Fiber Festival. And then this week she sent me, hang on, through Sophie, this beautiful pair of earrings that match my necklace. I have already thanked Jeanette. I will thank you here publicly. They're lovely. I love them so much. Um, yeah, back to this. Gift away, 4,000 subscribers. If you haven't subscribed yet and you're here, please consider subscribing and giving my video a little like. I don't do this very often, but this prize is outstanding um, and valuable and beautiful. And I want it to go to somebody so Jeanette Walker, she is on Prince Edward Island. She is coming to the February Winter Gathering Weekend. I can't wait to spend some time with her and sit and chat. Um, get sent me, when she sent me the chain for my mine, she sent a whole other necklace for me to be able to give away to you guys. So the chain on this one is what she's going to be selling. It's different from the one that I have. Um, but I actually, mine is a skinnier one because I usually would just wear it up here. I don't put the extender on. I wear an apron at work, which comes to here. So just on this chain, it fits perfectly kind of up here. I kind of have it up here. I take the extender off. I have it up here. And, um, but I really like the look of this chain. So I've ordered one from Jeanette and she's going to bring it when I see her in February. But this is what we're going to be gifting it's a gift from Jeanette through me. It's a beautiful stitch marker progress keeper set on this adjustable silver chain with and B themed. You can see the B progress keeper there. There's end of round and then there's just regular stitch markers. So when I get to 4,000 subscribers, we will have a gift away. So if we get there before the next one, it will be on the next one. And I will do a draw from comments for this beautiful stitch marker necklace. And thank you again to Jeanette for the lovely donation. So I don't think 4,000 is too much to ask for that, is it? So as I said, if you haven't subscribed, please do. And once we get to 4,000, I will do that giveaway. We'll have a prompt and we'll do it here on the YouTubes. And uh, this beautiful piece of knitting jewelry will go out to a lucky winner. All right. I think that is it. Uh, it's January. I have been, um, our business is a little quieter this time of year. So I've had some extra time off. Um, we've been doing paperwork and cleaning and all the fun not stuff. Um, it's typical January retail month. Um, yeah, we haven't had too much snow. A little annoying bits here and there. I was going to take a walk through the woods this morning and I didn't get very far because it was a lot deeper than I thought and my boots filled up and my ankles got cold and I turned around and came back in.
So there might be a little bit of footage of that. Um, the woods look beautiful. They're dusted with, with uh, a little bit of snow, which is very pretty, but it's prettier for me on the inside. I don't own snowshoes and I'm too klutzy to, to ski. Okay. I think that's everything. It's everything on my list. Um, we are long again. I'm sorry. And no, I'm not sorry. I love coming to chat with you guys. Time just flies and I can't believe I'm still talking after this amount of time. And if you're still here, cheers and thank you. Um, I wish you happy knitting over the next three weeks or so until I see you again. Um, don't forget my Nured sock will be out. Um, if you're in the market for a new sock pattern, I would appreciate it. If not, if you could share my posts and let your friends know, that would also be super, super helpful. Okay, that's enough. I wish you happy knitting, happy sipping. I will see you in three weeks. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs>